Good afternoon, and welcome to the bustling metropolis of Gatson, Alabama. And why am I here? Well, primarily because Huntsville has become one of the preeminent, if not the preeminent, tech hubs for any area in the South. As if you want to talk about space, if you want to talk about groundbreaking technology, Huntsville is where it's at these days. And as a result, the hotels are insanely expensive, ranging anywhere from $400 a night to $700 a night. And these are for average, everyday, brand name type hotels like Marriott, Fairfield Inn, that sort of thing. None of these exclusive top of the line type hotels, but just the type of place that one would expect to stay on your average vacation, except for a lot more money than I even had to pay in London. So what am I doing here? Why have I decided to make this trip, spend all this money just to come to Huntsville and check out a company that a lot of you may not be very familiar with, a company called Dynetics, which is a division of the Latos Corporation. And why am I interested in a new HLS for Artemis? Because after all, wasn't there a decision already made? Hasn't SpaceX won this battle already? And isn't Lunar Starship the anointed HLS system for returning mankind to the moon? Well, not necessarily. You see, when NASA gave that initial contract to SpaceX, it was always understood that there was going to be another HLS system, a sustainable landing system. And that was something Dynetics was holding out for. One of the reasons actually why they didn't press their legal case as far as Blue Origin did, because when it comes to a sustainable human landing system, that is to say a lander that can visit the moon repeatedly, sometimes in a single mission, without having to return to Earth for refueling? Well, the Dynetic system, also called the Alpaca, is the best solution by far. And even though, in my opinion, Starship is definitely the solution that's going to work for the long run, Alpaca has some serious advantages. And we're going to find out all about that in just a moment. Oh, and real quick, I want to thank all of you for supporting this trip. Thank you so much for making all of this happen. As I said, this is not an inexpensive place to stay or to visit because of just how much Huntsville is exploding in the tech field these days. So thanks so much for your support. And if you'd like to support this endeavor of mine further and also my future trips around the country, the links are in the description. Let's get on with it. So why does the HLS program exist anyway? I mean, we didn't need it during the Apollo era. Well, because of the way SLS is designed. As all of us know, Orion can't land on the moon. Unlike Apollo, SLS does not have the ability to take us to the moon and back. Instead, we need a whole separate system to do this. Now, before everybody starts questioning the wisdom of that, well, that's what we're stuck with and that's what we have to try to figure out. And as you can see from this recent depiction of the slow buildup of the Lunar Gateway, a station so small that it makes the habitable space on Salyut 6 look big, well, we start to see exactly what the requirements are going to be for a lander. And by the way, yeah, you're not seeing Lunar Starship there, but instead a type of human landing system that doesn't even exist and never will exist. And by the way, this came out after Lunar Starship was selected as the HLS system. This indicates that NASA really doesn't believe that Lunar Starship is going to be the only choice to land on the moon and return to the Gateway, primarily because Artemis really doesn't need it. 
you don't need a colossal spaceship capable of carrying a hundred metric tons to the moon and also landing a hundred metric tons on the moon to handle the needs of two to four astronauts, which is all Artemis is going to require until 2035 and probably later than that. As most of us know, the whole reason that Lunar Starship was selected was because it was the only HLS system that NASA could afford at the time. Yes, it's a very good ship for transporting lots of cargo and lots of personnel to the moon, but it requires so much infrastructure and so much refueling that it may not be practical to use for these early missions for Artemis. I mean, think about it. Even if Starship is capable of carrying 150 tons worth of fuel to orbit every single time, and even if Starship is completely reusable by then, it will still require eight refueling missions of Starship, plus the launch of Lunar Starship in the first place, just to get Lunar Starship to lunar orbit, where it will dock with the Orion, pick up two astronauts and transport them to the lunar surface, then take them back to lunar orbit, where they'll be transported back to Earth by Orion. So that's nine launches of the biggest rocket in human history to get two astronauts to the surface of the moon. This is just not efficient. This is a lot more efficient, using a very small spacecraft that will require at most two refueling missions, which by the way don't go to low Earth orbit, but instead go to lunar orbit, and this ship will be capable of transporting those two astronauts to the surface of the moon with three rocket launches, not nine. Now SpaceX fans love to point out just how tiny this thing is compared to Lunar Starship. I mean, isn't it cute? But I mean, come on. How big does it really need to be for the job, for two astronauts or even four? It's significantly larger than Apollo was and about the same size as Orion. So does it really need to be a million times bigger than Orion if it only needs to transport a few astronauts to the surface? And also keep in mind that it's going to require one third the launches that Starship will in order to bring astronauts to the surface in the first place. Indeed, if you use the same alpaca, it will only require two launches for every trip once it's actually in lunar orbit. The thing can be reused as many as 10 times. That being the case then, it only requires two refueling launches to the moon to bring people to the surface, whereas Starship will require eight refueling launches for every trip to the moon. Now it's definitely worth it if you're taking 100 tons or maybe even a bit more to the moon, but you're not going to be doing that with any foreseeable Artemis mission. That being the case then, this really is a much better fit for a sustainable, reusable lunar lander. Hell, it can even be used for surface habitats, as you can see right here. And by the way, this is something that was created by another favorite company of mine, Sierra Space, utilizing their inflatable habitat technology in order to establish not a very large habitat, but certainly large enough for two to four people on the surface of the moon. So once again, is Lunar Starship really necessary for these initial missions? Also, Alpaca could serve as a scout, being capable of transporting astronauts to the surface multiple times in a single mission, as long as you commit enough launches to that mission. And keep in mind, once again, it only requires two refueling missions for every visit to the lunar surface. So for the same number of launches, Alpaca could visit the lunar surface four times for every one lunar starship mission. Seems better and better all the time, doesn't it? And it's for this reason that Dynetics received the largest award from NASA, both for the sustainable lander contract and also the largest initial award for the HLS system in the first place. It was only right after they made their decision to go with Lunar Starship that Dynetics got thrown under the bus. Now for pretty good reasons, because the alpaca did not have the sufficient fuel to weight ratio necessary to get the thing back into Lunar 
outer orbit, at least with its initial design, that's a big problem in itself. And also its drop tanks were not the greatest design either, but those problems have since been rectified. The Alpaca no longer requires drop tanks, the entire thing is 100% reusable, and the problems with fuel to weight ratio were resolved actually before the initial HLS contract was even awarded. So really, the first contract award was about price. I mean, nobody was going to match Elon Musk's original offer of $2.9 billion for Lunar Starship. And again, given what a pathetic amount of money NASA was receiving from Congress for HLS at the time, they didn't have a damn choice, but now they do. So what's been happening with Alpaca besides the fact that it no longer has drop tanks? Well, recently, actually, at the beginning of this month, Dianetics announced all of the different milestones it's been hitting in developing this lander on the relatively meager amount of money that NASA gave them. For example, the propulsion system, which runs off of methalox, and they developed what's called a dual regen chamber, meaning that the chamber is cooled by using both propellants. Hot fire tests have already been conducted at the Marshall Space Flight Center with a full-scale chamber, generating critical data for main engine development. On top of that, full-scale main engine turbo pumps have already been built and then operated in water and cryogenic fluids to verify their rotodynamic characteristics. Flow throttling was then demonstrated with a turbine bypass valve at the Marshall Flight Center's component development lab and ways to control vaporization of cryogenic propellants for use in the reaction control system were also tested. The RCS thrust development team conducted over 500 tests, including vacuum testing with a full-scale refractory metal nozzle to refine the RCS design. Quote, we have an outstanding propulsion team at Dynetics, said Robert Wright, Space Division Manager. Combining our expertise with NASA Marshalls, we were able to develop a propulsion system that is ideal for HLS missions. In addition to that, Dynetics has also been working on cryogenic fluid management for transferring propellants in lunar orbit. And this is something that will benefit SpaceX as well. Alpaca will require two refuelings in lunar orbit before every lunar mission. And in although they cannot test these systems in microgravity, they've been using a system called radio frequency mass gauging to simulate the effects of microgravity on propellants as they're being transferred from one vehicle to another. And the results have been promised although obviously a lot of work still needs to be done, whether it be by D Dynetics or by SpaceX, since neither company has really been able to test refueling systems in orbit. On top of that, they've been working on lunar dust mitigation. Lunar dust was a significant problem for Apollo astronauts, and on longer duration missions, there's a concern that the buildup of lunar dust will render components like solar arrays and cameras unusable. That being the case, Dynetics and NASA have been working on something called an electrodynamic dust shield. The technology uses electrical charges via tiny wires built into surfaces such as optical lenses to remove dust quickly and efficiently. Dynetics manufactured EDS devices have showed that they can greatly mitigate the buildup of dust on critical surfaces. And finally, the Dynetics HLS team has been working on high-density batteries that will allow Alpaca to function properly through the 14-day lunar night. So those solar panels that you see mounted on the vehicle are not going to be the exclusive source of its power. And then its docking systems are being worked on as well. So Dynetics has not been idle. They've been taking this about $100 million or so that they received from NASA between the two awards and have really run with it. And in my opinion, this system would be perfectly paired with Lunar Starship for a comprehensive solution for our future lunar missions. Lunar Starship can provide all the refueling, being capable of carrying at least 100 tons worth of fuel and maybe as much as 120 tons, which would be enough to refuel Alpaca three times. So one Lunar Starship could handle three Alpaca missions, which would eliminate the need for six refueling launches from Earth. 
all of this would work together to produce an elegant and comprehensive solution to the Artemis mission in the future, and the two would work far better together than they do competing against one another. So this is why I'm here, to get up close and personal with Alpaca, to also perhaps even manipulate some of the virtual systems that astronauts are using right now to simulate a landing on the moon with Alpaca. I'm going to be granted a unique and amazing opportunity to get up close and personal with a vehicle that may take astronauts to the moon in the near future. I feel so privileged, and none of this would have been possible without your help help. Smash that like, hit that subscribe, please remember those notification bells, and as always, stay angry about space!